Hey guys, happy Aloha Friday to you. Today's video is a compilation of some places you can eat at in the Salt Lake and airport area. So today we're gonna start off with breakfast at Jets. Um, if you don't know where Jets is, it's on Koapaka Street, um, right behind the JN Chevrolet, and I got their breakfast. It's uh, two eggs, whatever meat you want. They have uh, bacon, Portuguese sausage, pork links, all that spam, two scoops of rice. And um, I really wanted to try their prime rib and their specials. They had a Hawaiian plate today, but she told me lunch doesn't start till 10.30 and I got here early so I can get, film everything all in one day. So we're gonna just dive on into this breakfast. I got the Portuguese sausage, looks really good. Looks pretty simple, can't go wrong with the two eggs I got um, over easy. So the egg is perfectly cooked, um, nice and runny if it's over easy. If you don't like it, you can get over medium or scrambled. They do have omelets as well. And I like to mash up my rice with the egg. Dive on in here. Mmm, super good. It's nicely salted. I like the seasoning. Sometimes they don't put enough salt on the eggs or they don't put any at all, but this has a nice flavor. Try out the Portuguese sausage. Nice cuts. I think you get four pieces. Mmm, nice char on it. Goes so well with the rice. They have omelets and other things, but I'm pretty simple with my breakfast. I just like a meat and some rice and eggs. And you can't go wrong, it's so good. And I just like how that egg yolk glistens on your rice and gives it that nice taste. That's why I like over easy eggs with um, my breakfast. So good. So that was a pretty simple starter, really delicious. It's simple. It's nothing special, but what I came here for was the price for all the breakfast with the two eggs, any meat you want, simple kind of rice dish. It's all $6.50 straight out, flat with tax. Um, parking is an issue there. Um, it can get crowded. There are about five stalls in the front, but it's quite awkward because the other stalls in the middle, I don't know how you would get out because there's a sidewalk and there's people parked parallel parked there. So it would be really hard to get out if the other outside stalls were taken. But I got a stall really early. It's really nice in there. Um, very clean and air conditioned if you want to eat in. And the lady was super nice. So definitely check out Jets if you're in the airport area and you want a quick, cheap breakfast. So for our second stop, it's a institution in Salt Lake. It is Soon's Kalbi and everybody always says you should go there. But um, honestly, in my opinion, their kalbi is great. I don't really care for their sides. A lot of people love their meat jun. I'm not a fan of meat jun, but I'll eat it. And we'll just, I'm just showcasing it because a lot of people love their food and their meat jun. So this is pretty much what it looks like. This is their kalbi combo. So it has a bit of everything in it. So pretty much you got a uh, piece of kalbi, some meat jun, some bulgogi, which is some barbecued beef and uh, barbecued chicken. You get your banchan on the side, um, pretty much some seasoned, they call it namu in Korean. It's uh, bean sprouts with the cabbage and some kimchi and two scoops of rice. So let's try their meat jun first. Pour some sauce over it. Their sauce seems to be uh, like a soy based regular meat jun type of sauce with a little bit of chili pepper flake in it. Pretty good. It's quite thin. And if you don't know what meat jun is, it's pretty much a thin slice of beef that's marinated in the same kind of sauce like bulgogi sauce. And it's uh, coated in flour first and then egg. So the opposite of dredging the flour, that's what gives it that eggy yellow look on the outside. The sauce is sweet, which people probably, that's what they love about it, I guess. Um, I wouldn't say it's the best, but I'm not a fan of meat, Johnny. I would say the best for what I've tasted before would be Young's Kalbi in Aia, and of course the famous Dong Ying. But I think people like Dong Ying because it's super, super sweet. This is okay though. We'll try the mandu out. 
mandu is pretty much a Korean dumpling with meat inside and cabbage. Mmm. Now that's good. So this one's super good. I really like this one. It's got good flavor to it. It's uh, interesting in that it has a little bit of long rice in it, it seems, some cabbage, and really good pork uh, filling. It's really seasoned good. Also, I think there's chives in it. Gives it really good flavor, and I like the crunch. It's piping hot, so um, it's made to order. Um, super delicious. Should have got more of these. Okay, we'll try our um, bulgogi beef. It's all this beef, nicely sliced thin, soaked in a Korean marinade. Pretty much the same as kalbi. It's got that sesame seed oil, the soy base, and the sugar. Hmm. I'm not a fan of bulgogi either. I think because I'm not into sweet things. Um, I do love kalbi and the barbecue chicken. Um, I don't usually go to Korean places, I've said before, because my mom is from Korea and I like her cooking. So I'm kind of very picky about Korean food, but this has good flavor. Really good charred barbecue grill type flavor. You get kind of like a smokiness from the smoke. And if you know and you always pass through Salt Lake, you see the smoke billowing from the shopping center. So that grilled taste is super yummy. And I actually really like this. I'm not a fan, like I said, of bulgogi because this one's not sweet. It's not too sweet. Um, almost reminds me of a smoked beef jerky without the dryness part, but just that flavor of beef, beef jerky. And the slices have a good fat ratio. It's not too tough. It's not dry. It's the perfect consistency. Super yummy. All right, we're going to dig into the kalbi. It's one piece of a kalbi, um, and it's pretty reasonably sized. It's got a lot of meat on the cut. I cut it into a piece, and we're just going to go savage with this because it's hard to eat with a fork. Mm. If you're not into fatty things, you're not going to like this, but the short rib has the nice fatty cuts. Super delicious. And again, because they have that grill with the billowing smoke, it has that nice smoky char and a good grill flavor. It's not like other Korean uh, barbecue places that are fast food that just probably cook it on a flat top or something. This is super delicious. And I'm probably bad because I'm the type that eats around the bone, which is not good for you, but it's so good. I like the nice chewiness to it and the crunch of the fat around it. Yummy. The kalbi is just glistening with this horrible for you fat, but tastes so good. And it's, uh, you can't go wrong with the kalbi. All right, next up is the barbecue chicken. That's uh, a huge piece of chicken that they butterflied. Usually they use thighs. Looks nice with the awesome char and it's just glistening with the marinade. Um, I'm just gonna go in and try my favorite part, which might be weird to some people, but I like the bone end. Mmm, super good too. This again has that nice char. It almost reminds me, it's so different from other Korean places. Almost reminds me of a Korean style huli huli chicken because it has that nice char, the nice smoky flavor from their grill. I'm not sure if they're using real charcoal or what, but it definitely has a nice taste compared to a propane grill or a flat top. If you love huli huli chicken, but you want it with a little Korean twist, definitely get the barbecue chicken. This is good. Chicken is super winners. It's moist inside, not dried out. They leave a little bit of skin on, so it chars on the grill. Super good. All right, let's try the banchan. It's what Koreans call namu. This is bean sprouts with sesame seed oil and salt. Pretty standard, flavored good. And then you got your cabbage as the other side. Mm, that one's okay. I'm not a fan. It's uh, very vinegary. Some people like it though, like a pickled cabbage. Lots of vinegar, sour taste. And then we got the kimchi. Delicious 
kimchi made out of cabbage, not wombok. Pretty good. It's quite sour. So if you like fermented kimchi, it's for you. But if you don't like the sour fermented taste, then it might be a little bit too sour for you. All right, friends, so that's pretty much Soon's Kalbi. Uh, they're Kalbi combination plate. The reason I got it out of all the things they offer is because it offers everything that is pretty much on their menu. And I wanted to taste everything. I have been to Soon's a couple times. Um, it's kind of okay. Like I said, I don't usually visit Korean fast food places um, due to my mom who cooks it all the time and brings it over to me. So um, this is really good. I really thought it was delicious. My favorites would be the mandu was great, the barbecue chicken's bomb, and I really enjoyed the bulgogi as well. Um, the thing that might disappoint you is the price is $19.75 for this plate lunch. Very, very expensive plate lunch, but I'll say that it is packed to the brim. I probably can make three meals out of this. If you're a big eater, you probably couldn't. I don't know if you could finish it. Maybe you could, but you definitely have some leftovers. So very pricey plate lunch, but very good uh, flavor. Um, so if you're looking for a better tasting Korean plate lunch, Soon's Kalbi is it in Salt Lake Shopping Center. All right, guys, our next stop is Stadium Giant Malts and Barbecue. Um, if you go through the Stadium Mall parking lot, it's right under the big Ice Palace sign. Um, you can park anywhere in that shopping center. Parking's pretty abundant if it's not too busy on a weekend or something. But most of the time you'll find a stall, not necessarily right in front of them, but you'll find something. And they're known for their um, combos. They have seafood combos. Uh, they do steak and shrimp. It's a pretty much a, any kind of drive through with local plate lunches. Um, the old font reminds me of Bob's Barbecue, so I don't know if they're related or were a long time ago because they were both here from like the 70s or so and the font looks the same. I'm sure the owners are different now because time has passed, but the menu is also kind of the same as Bob's Barbecue in Kalihi. And Bob's also has the Brontosaurus beef ribs and the baby back ribs. So I got their combo. This is their chicken katsu and their pork baby back rib plate. Um, if you're looking for real barbecue Southern style, this ain't it. It's just pretty much local home style cooking and a affordable plate lunch place. I just wanna say this plate is freaking huge and massive and it probably weighs more than three pounds. I mean, seriously, this is heavy. Lots of food. So we'll try their chicken katsu without the sauce first. Mmm, super crispy. I'm sure you can hear that crunch. Delicious. This is their sauce, so I'll pour some on. Okay, let's try it with the sauce. Mmm. Pretty standard chicken katsu. The sauce is good, not too sweet. Just a nice balance of that sweetness, but you know, just not overly piling sugary. I don't like that, but this is good. The crunch is there. It's cooked perfectly. The inside's not dry, but the outside's really crunchy and brown and crispy. Can't go wrong. And look at how much chicken katsu they give you. It's massive, very generous. Try it out with the rice. Pretty good, but the rice is quite a little bit soggy. But not too bad. But cooked a little bit with too much water for my taste. Let's try these baby back ribs. I don't even know how I'm going to eat this. Because they didn't really cut it. Oh, I see. It just breaks off the bone like that. Whoa. Really tender. I'm really into smoking meat myself, so I can tell this is not a traditional southern smoked rib. It's parboiled. You can tell it's boiled by the color, but I don't mind if it's boiled and has a good char on it after. As long as it tastes good. Pretty good char flavor on the outside from the grill top. It does have a porky flavor from being boiled, if you know what I'm talking about. 
It's not like the flavor you would get smoking the ribs in a smoker. But overall, it's pretty tender. I'll say the sauce is a little bit watery, but it's all right. It has a nice sweetness to it, the barbecue sauce. It tastes homemade. It doesn't taste like it's from a squeeze bottle or something. So how many did they give? One, two, three, four, five, five baby back ribs. Pretty massive. Very generous again with their servings. All in all, not so bad. For a different kind of plate lunch, the meat is very tender, falls apart. It's not overcooked. And they, you know, char it on the grill last minute to get that charred flavor to it. As you can see, the different uh, colors. So the top is kind of, I'm not sure if you can see, light colored. You would think they char the top a little bit more, but the bottom has more of a char. Okay, so let's try their mac salad. You get a scoop of mac salad. Looks pretty um, plain and just mayo-y. I don't see any carrot or onion in it. Pretty much a plain mayo. It's got a little bit of a zing to it. So I don't think it, I don't know if they put vinegar in it and a little onion taste, but I don't taste or, you know, have a crunch of chopped onions in there. It's all right. I'm not a Mac fan, but your standard Mac salad. So this place was pretty crowded. It's pretty popular amongst the workers around here and just the people that lived around, live around the Halava area, Salt Lake area, Aliamanu area. But you would say there's nothing really special about this place because it's a typical plate lunch place. But I think the portions are huge. And I'm telling you, like I said, this plate is massive. It is very heavy. They give you a lot of food. And the price, I think, is pretty worth it in terms of how much they give you. This plate is $12. And I think that's pretty much a deal in the, these days and age. I mean, it's a typical standard price for a plate lunch, but the amount they give you is really worth it. It's humongous. Also, their unique thing is this malt, the chocolate malt. They only have one flavor. And so I got one. I got a small. I hate these paper straws. They suck. But a pretty good malt. Standard chocolate malt reminds me of my childhood. Maybe um, like those carnation malts you'd get at the movies or something. But delicious chocolate malt, really thick. Not too thick though, where you can't suck it up through the straw like a McDonald's milkshake or anything, but delicious and refreshing, nice and cool on a hot day. The only con I have for this is this is quite expensive. I'm not sure why, because I don't know, it's just chocolate. Um, ice cream i guess but um it is 525 for this little thing that's the cheapest one this small one and the bigger your cup the more expensive it gets so i think for 525 that's kind of expensive for a little drink but i just wanted to try it just to see but i am pleased with it it's delicious the price just kind of hurts all right our last stop is for dessert there are a couple of savory items in here but it's the jns lumpia spot and they used to be near Mayor Wright's on Vineyard Boulevard, and they just recently opened in Salt Lake, right after Target in that area on La Vejana Street. So if you're going there, uh, they have two reserved spots right after you pass them. There's a driveway there, and uh, you can park in those two spots for free. And if you're in a rush, I'm just gonna say that as a disclaimer, it does take a while to make because they make it from scratch, but they have all kinds of stuff. They have banana lumpia, strawberry cheesecake, and the regular Shanghai and beef. So let's start with the savory items. We've got some, this is the meat and veggie one. I'll break it out so we can have a close-up of it. Super nice and crispy. If you could only smell the bag right now, it smells so good. That oily, nice fried goodness smell. Super hot out. <laughs> but yeah, this has a lot of um, veggie in here. A little bit of beef, not too much, but I like the crunch of the outside, the wrapper. The flavor is good. There's little bits of meat in here. Not too much though, mostly cabbage and veggie. Like it says, it's a meat and veggie. And I do see a little bit of pancit noodles in there, skinny long rice type noodles. They do have two dipping sauces that come with your lumpia if you get the savory items. So I got the traditional vinegar one. 
let's open it up. Let me open it here. So it's pretty much the vinegar with the um, garlic pieces in there and pepper. We'll try it with the sauce, but without the sauce, it's pretty delicious already. Mmm. Real good with the sauce. Next up, we have the Shanghai, and I like how they label each one so you're not going to mix up your savory and sweet if you get both. Um, this one is a smaller one, looks a little thinner. Um, let's dip it in the sauce and give it a try. Mmm. I like this one better. Much more flavor to me than the other one. And everything melds well together, the meat and the veg, so it's not too much of one thing or the other. So out of the both, the Shanghai is the best to me. Um, anywhere, I, that's actually my favorite lumpia style. I think it's meatier and I like the pork. This one tastes like pork. Um, and I just like that there's more meat in here. But really good flavor. I could eat like a whole box of these. These are so bad for me. Oh, and if you're wondering what the other sauce that they give, um, you can either get the regular or the sweet and sour. They have a sweet and sour sauce if you don't like the vinegar. Okay, up next is the banana, and that's turon for uh, those who don't know, but it's a pretty much a banana lumpia with sugar and pieces of banana in here. You can see the glistening sugar coming out of it. So you know this is going to be good because of all the glistening sugar just crisping up and crystallizing outside. Oh yeah. Really prominent banana flavor. The banana's kind of melted down a bit in here, but the banana flavor is so strong in a good way. Sometimes you get uh, turon and it's just kind of flat. This one has the perfect sweetness, the balance of that and uh, the original banana flavor. Nothing artificial, it's just a natural, very strong banana flavor. Delicious. All right, and last but not least for our dessert, it's strawberry cheesecake. I thought it was very unique. Um, obviously it's not the typical Filipino lumpia, but they do do some um, fusion and it's coated in some delicious powdered sugar here. Um, and if you're wondering, cause I did mention it would go good with ice cream. They do serve it with ice cream if you want for extra. So let's take a taste of this one. I'm gonna have to go over the bag, all these crumbs from the sugar. Hmm. Definitely creamy inside with the cream cheese. Um, they do give you a lot of the cream cheese inside. You do see a little bit of strawberry, looks like strawberry jam or something, uh, spread up on the lumpia wrapper before they fried it, fried it up and rolled it up. Doesn't remind me of any Filipino food, of course, but very good. Highly recommend this one too. Reminds me of going to the fair. Just getting something from the fair that's fried and sweet. This is definitely brings you back to being a kid. I would say my favorite out of all of them that I tried. There are many more. Uh, here's the menu that I took while waiting. It's on their board. But um, I liked the banana first. The turon that was delicious. The Shanghai would be second very meaty and porky and yummy. Good flavor seasoning on the meat. Um, and my third would be the strawberry cheesecake. That was delicious as well. And lastly, the meat and veggie. I think there was uh, the beef and veggie, I'm sorry. There wasn't much beef in that one. It was mostly cabbage and um, just filler veggies. So that was good in flavor, but I prefer the Shanghai Lumpia anyway. Uh, not just at this place, anywhere. I'd rather take Shanghai Lumpia over the beef any day. So um, so for the price of the Lumpias are each individual Lumpia. You can also get better deals if you pack them. They sell packs of 12 and such, but I didn't want that many because I'm just tasting it. Um, but they do have a deal for three pieces for $4.30. So that included my meat and veg, the Shanghai and banana, and my extra strawberry cheesecake Lumpia was $2.50. So for a total of $7.12 for four lumpias. Um, the more you buy, the cheaper they are. They also uh, sell them frozen, so you can keep them in your freezer. So check them out. And that concludes my Salt Lake 
tour. There are many more restaurants I know in the Salt Lake Airport, Mupuna Puna area. I also did some restaurant reviews um, on their own and I'll list them in my description box below so you can check those out. And I do have a couple in mind to probably make a part two of this in the distant future since I have a whole list of places to get off my list. So I'll see you next time on another food adventure. Take care, peace out, be safe, and see you later.